Oh, all right, cool. We're live here. Hey, my name's Leah Tawa, Dr. John Peterson. Happy Friday to everybody out there that's watching. Thank you. And uh, hope you've had a great week. I know that I have. And uh, hope you all have a great uh, rest of the day on Friday here and a safe commute home from work and wherever you're coming from and going to. And uh, looks like the weather's going to be pretty nice here in Minneapolis. Uh, warm again. High 80s, low 90s, and a little bit of humidity, but uh, otherwise not too bad. Um, curious how the weather is, where you're at, wherever you are uh, watching this from. But I hope the weather's good for you and hope you have some fun things planned for the weekend. I wanted to talk a little bit today, and I'm going to keep this briefer than the last few. The last a couple of vlogs have gone oh, well over 20 minutes, 25, almost 30 minutes for that last one on Uber versus Lyft, which is... Uh, a little longer than what I wanted to do for these videos. I wanted to keep them short and sweet, like I said in the first one. And so uh, I'm going to try and keep this one pretty quick today. Uh, for those of you that know me, I used to be a uh, school teacher. You taught uh, seventh and eighth grade social studies in Spanish and a little bit of I had taught for about seven years. And then I worked as a coordinator for Minneapolis public schools and then was an assistant principal, principal, director and executive director over the past uh, 10 years or so. And that was in Minneapolis and St. Paul. Most of my teaching was done in Roseville Public Schools, which is a suburb just north of St. Paul and Minneapolis. <clears throat> so today I wanted to focus a little bit on back to school tips. Um, I think this can be helpful, hopefully for parents and maybe some students out there. And I'm just gonna kind of go off the top of my head. I don't have a real, uh, defined list of things to talk about. Um, I'm, I'm not an expert on the little ones. Uh, Pre-K up through about fifth grade is not my area of expertise, um, but I definitely have some information that I've picked up over the years and some things that I can share both from a parent perspective, but also from an educator perspective that might be helpful for, so many, for, for some of our uh, folks who might be educators out there watching. So a couple things. Um, for me, I like to think about getting into the routine and the habits that uh, are associated with the school year. And so one of the things we try and do in our house, our home with our children, uh, is ensure that the first week or the week before the first week of school, I think school in Minneapolis starts on the 27th, if I'm not mistaken, uh, start looking at those bedtimes and those getting up times in the morning uh, and running those pretty consistent with what uh, happens during the school year so that that first day back is not a significant shock to the system. So just monitoring bedtimes is helpful. I think one of the things that kids love to do over the summer is stay up a little bit later and sleep in a little bit later. And so whether you do your mor morning or evening routines with, uh, you know, bath, teeth brushing, maybe a show, a snack, whatever it might be, just making sure that whatever it is you do for that first uh, week before the, the first week back, I should say, the week before the first week of school, um, just getting into some of the habits and routines that uh, are consistent with the, with the school year. The second thing that I thought I'd talk a little bit about is we strive, no, we don't do it all the time, but we strive to make the uh, Monday through Thursday pretty much screen free. Uh, during the week, during the school year. And uh, what that means is we don't turn on the television. Uh, we try and stay off of our phones, off of our devices, off of iPads, iPhones, that sort of thing. It's definitely not easy. It's a challenge. Um, you know, I like, me personally, I like to watch the news every night, um, even though some of it is not the most upful uh positive news, but I do like to watch the local news, especially, and see what's going on with the weather and sports and stuff like that. So, but we try to make it a screen-free environment Monday through Thursday. What we found is that when we don't turn the television set on and we stay mostly off of our phones, iPads, that sort of thing, that the amount of time that we have to spend on homework, reading, and practicing piano increases quite a bit. Uh, the amount of time that we have together as a family goes up quite a bit. And uh, although we don't do that every week of every uh, month, the entire year, it's something that we found 
uh, to be pretty pretty positive, pretty good uh, for our kids and for our families. Just turn the screens off Monday through Thursday. Um, some of you that might be like, ah, man, we don't watch much TV or we're not really on our phones anyway. So that's not that's not really anything that you're suggesting. That would be a big deal. But for other folks who do tend to watch a lot of TV and uh, be on their phones or devices, that can be kind of a big deal. So, But it's something to consider. Definitely making dedicated time for homework and at least 30 minutes of reading. Um, if they're younger, it can be 15, 20 minutes. But I think if they're in second or third, fourth grade, they're supposed to be reading 30, 30, 40 minutes um, a night um, in addition to homework. And both of our children play piano. Our and Oscar play piano. So they've got uh, for piano each night as well. And that's in addition to bath and dinner and all the other things that happen, brushing teeth, all that sort of stuff that happens in the evening time routine. So something to consider, turning screens off. Uh, the third thing that I'd like to share with folks is uh, going to your local public library or Barnes & Noble or your school library and ensuring that your children have books to read at home, uh, books that are interesting and books that capture their imagination uh, is incredibly important. I think that reading um, it's just something that we take for granted sometimes as adults. I know many of us that are in our 30s and 40s and our 50s grew up without cell phones and grew up without, for the most part, personal computers and laptops and, and digital devices. And, and I think we, may, I know I should say, I take for granted a little bit the amount of time that uh, I had to just read, um, whether it was reading J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit or a missioner book or whatever it might have been. Um, it's definitely something to, to consider. And making sure that there's time for both uh, you to read to your child or children, but also time for them to independently read on their own silently. Um, I think that's really, really a critical, critical aspect of the learning process. And I know that teachers out there love it when students read at home. Um, and I think a lot of teachers in classrooms have reading logs. I know that um, our son Oscar had a reading log last year and two years ago, Nora had a reading log that she had to do. And so I think one of the things that's important is going out, finding some books, making sure the kids pick up books that they like and uh, in both fiction and nonfiction texts. Um, I know that uh, the, the assessments that students have to do um, across the board, starting in third grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade and up, uh, test on both nonfiction comprehension of text as well as fictional comprehension of text. And so it's important to get different types of books uh, that fall in those two, two genres, fiction and nonfiction. And again, for those of you that are parents that have kids who love to read and you have to tell them to not read because they read so much, um, you can you can disregard this message, but I just I know that reading is something that uh, we try and try and stress here in our house, and it's challenging. I mean, you're working against uh, all those different devices um, that kids want to be on these days, and you know, play games and that sort of thing. Uh, fourth thing that I want to talk a little bit about is for those of you that have children that are entering into the fifth grade this year. It's uh, every year of the schooling process, I think, is important. But fifth grade is a critical year because fifth grade is when they start to uh, determine what types of classes students are going to be taking in middle school, especially if the school that they plan to attend is a sixth, seventh, and eighth grade middle school. Um, if they're in a K-8 school, it might be a little bit different uh, going from uh, sixth grade to seventh grade to eighth grade. Um, but if they're going from fifth grade into sixth, seventh, eighth grade, um, this is something, this is a really critical year for you to connect with other parents, possibly the school social worker or counselor at the school, more likely the counselor uh, if they have one. And if they don't have a counselor, uh, maybe contacting the counselor at the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade school that your child will be attending the following fall and finding out what is available for classes. Uh, Sometimes the information that is sent out to fifth grade parents uh, is, uh, let's put it this way, it's not as uh, readily accessible as it could be sometimes. Uh, you have to hunt around for it a little bit. 
Uh, I say this because a lot of what happens in that fifth to sixth grade transition has an effect and impacts the courses that students take in sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade, and twelfth grade. And so whether you are going into an international baccalaureate school or whether you're going into a school that has advanced courses, accelerated courses is a term that sometimes gets brought up, you want to make sure that your child has exposure and access to the broad, full range of all the courses that exist. Um, and that goes uh, for all parents of all backgrounds, of all ethnicities, all races, all cultures, all language. Uh, you want to just make sure that you know what your options are and that your child has an opportunity and you have an opportunity to get into the courses that you think are best for your child. And in some cases that takes calling the uh, middle school and finding out what's available and seeing maybe online if they have a course catalog and taking a look at what sorts of classes, especially in the area of math and English. As I mentioned in the ACT video last week, math and English are two really important factors in determining how students get into college. And so if there are accelerated math courses, uh, accelerated English courses, you definitely want to make sure you find out what the offerings are for uh, kids that are going into sixth grade the following year. Because sometimes the decisions and the recommendations that come from teachers are made in that fifth grade year. And sometimes as a parent, you're aware of those recommendations and other times as a parent, you're not. And so uh, don't just rely on your child to tell you what's happening. Be proactive and go forward and uh, make those phone calls or emails or communications to ensure that you have uh, a good awareness and knowledge of what's available for your child or children as they go into middle school, um, which is a different system and a different format. Uh, national research for a long time has said that most students accelerate and do well in first grade, kindergarten, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, and it's right about that middle level where things start to taper off for a while. And then in high school, students start to increase again in their learning. And one of the things that I know that a lot of the educators that I've been around in the last 18 years have been trying to figure out is how do we, how do we improve how we deliver our instruction and our curriculum and how do we ensure that our students are learning the key uh, concepts, the uh, skills, the attributes, the dispositions, all the different things, being exposed to multiple types of content um, from different backgrounds so that they can be successful in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade and there isn't that kind of middle school drop off or uh, tapering, that tapering effect that occurs. Um, so just be involved is all I can say, but but be involved and be respectful of your child's space too. But there's definitely a benefit to staying involved and staying in tune with what's happening with your child's education, especially at that middle school level. And then obviously at the high school level, it's kind of a whole different ball game. Uh, students are becoming young adults and they take on more responsibility, hopefully. Um, but then again, as a parent, you have to stay involved at that level too. So just to kind of review the four things that I talked about, I think I mentioned uh, getting into some good habits the week before the school year starts. And I know some schools have already started. I've seen on Facebook some friends and colleagues who have children that are already back to school. Uh, the second piece that I talked about was, uh, I think it was talking about turning off screens Monday through Thursday or even Monday through Friday or even the whole week if you want to. Uh, I don't know how many folks do that anymore, but uh, uh, just limiting uh, some of the screen time for children. And that means that you as parents, or we as parents have to limit our screen time too. I think it's not fair uh, to uh, limit uh, children's screen time and then we're on our phones the whole time. Uh, that, that doesn't really jive with the children. At least it doesn't jive with our children, with my kids. So make sure you're trying to keep things equitable with your kids. I think the third thing that I mentioned was uh, – taking a look at getting some good books and reading material for your children uh, in fiction and nonfiction. Uh, go to your local county library, uh, make a visit to the school library with your child after school and have them take you on a tour of your of the, the school library and have them pick some books out. Um, I don't think it's fair to just rely on teachers to ensure that students pick out the right books. I think parents can can do that too. And, and if you have a little extra cash and you, and you feel like you want a reward or 
uh, provide a, a, an option for your children, you can always go to a bookstore and, uh, and have them pick out a book or two at a bookstore. Um, that's always a good option. And then that fourth option that I talked about was just taking a look at those of you that are parents of fifth graders, making sure that your children are exposed to the broad range of uh, courses that are available in the middle school years. And I know that's different depending on whether or not they're in an IB uh, pathway or whether they're in a career focused pathway or whether they're in an uh, advanced placement uh, AP pathway, you know, maybe the high school they're going to be going to focuses more on advanced placement AP as opposed to IB. Or maybe they have both or maybe they have college in the schools. But I think it's important as parents to take a look at what are the different offerings that the high school can be courses that students can take to earn college credit. That's a whole nother, sec whole nother session and a whole nother video that I can talk um, a little bit about. Uh, how to pick out the right courses so that you can earn some college credit while you're in high school. And there's even some options for eighth graders to earn some college credit as well. But I think what I was focusing on in this video today was ensuring that your fifth grader and you know that uh, the full broad range of options are available in the sixth grade year and that um, you're, you're allowed to, to choose and, and have some choice in which courses that uh, you're your young person is going to be uh, taking as a sixth grader the following year. So we're at the 16 minute mark. I think I'm going to cut it off there. Um, if you have any questions or comments or concerns or you want to like the page, please feel free. I hope people check this out again. This session or this video was on uh, tips for back to school. Just went through a couple off the top of my head. There are so many others out there, um, but uh, I won't go into go into all of that today because it's Friday and, I know that people uh, want to get out and enjoy their enjoy their weekend.